Sweden, it's time for DreamHack Summer 2015 to get started as we have 120 of the world's best Hearthstone players gathered here, but only one will be the DreamHack Summer Champion. My name is Dan Frodan Show, and this weekend I'm joined by Marcin Nims Filipovic, the team captain of Cloud9, as well as the team captain of Nylum Gaming, Jakob Lothar Shigulski. Almost. 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 <laughs> I got it. I'll, I'll fix it out throughout the weekend. Shigulski. Shigulski. Yeah, uh, both right. Polish players, both phenomenal casters as well. How are you guys doing? Doing great, man. It's like it's been a third time I'm, I'm here. At the first Dreamhack summer, I was playing. Like, the Dreamhack winter, I was casting, casting again, right. and you know, having a lot of fun. It's like just just walking for Dreamhack. You feel the energy and the community feeling from all those people. That somebody says uh, like shouts hello, and everybody mm -hmm. shouts hello as well. It's just amazing, amazing atmosphere. Yeah. Absolutely, Lothar, uh, you're here as a cast this time. Most time during here in Dreamhack, you're here as a player. So yes. wha what's that all about? Well, that's. A new experience for me, but I'm really happy to be here and cast. Uh, I was eager to play also, but you know, mm -hmm. the opportunity came up and I just took it. So this time I won't be uh, the open qualifier player like <laughs> last time. <laughs> That's right. So we'll see how it goes. I Dr Dreamhack Summer last year was one of my most enjoyable tournaments, and uh, I was really close to advancing to the main event, like one one match short. And so I will see how it goes now with the first major Swiss tournament. I'm really hyped for it. That's right. So let's go ahead and explain uh, what this tournament format is going to be. Most people see Hearthstone tournaments in group stages. What they have is maybe a round of 64 or 32 where they play double elimination and then they advance to like a single elimination bracket. And this time around, we're taking more of how people usually do card games in general, where they have a massive bracket or massive pool of players, and they play a format called Swiss, yep. uh, where they match up against people by round and by record. Yeah, uh, it's an amazing format because everybody will play and nobody is eliminated, for the two days at least. So for the next two days, we're going to have, I believe, uh, seven rounds of Swiss, mm -hmm. three rounds today, seven rounds yes. tomorrow. We're going to show at least six matches to you because we have, how many? 64 machines, I believe. Well, we have um, 64 matches each, uh, each round, but we have three to two 32 computers here, so we're dividing the each round in heats. Right. So the first hour will be hit one, then we have a short break, then we have hit two of the round. Mm -hmm. So we will see two, at least two matches from each round uh, that we feature and cast from here. Uh, so there will be some really, really good challenges. Yeah. And after two days, we'll have a cut to top eight, right? So it's like seven right. rounds and... Uh, who is getting to top eight, Lothar? It's like after seven rounds, there is like one seven old guy, right? Well, that was always uh, this is and this is really cool about Swiss. Um, it's basically fixed when it comes to uh, people having a specific amount of wins because how Swiss works, the people that uh, wi are winning are playing against other winners, mm -hmm. so they're always paired against each other. So there will be one guy that will be s oh girl, you never know, right? <laughs> That's uh, right. We don't discriminate here. Yep, uh, will be seven zero, mm -hmm. so. Flawless victory, seven wins in this tournament will be really right. something uh, a big of a trip, uh, a bigger trip here, and then we'll have seven players with a result of six wins and one loss. So basically, if you want to advance, you have to you can be flawless or just lose one. Yeah. So it's like double elimination, but it's uh, it's um, more fair when it comes to pay rings because right. the best player plays versus the best player all the time. Yeah. And there always look like no easy bracket. Well, like the, first round is, the first round is It random. sounds really complicated, uh, but we, we will be able to explain it as it goes on. The most important thing is that you shouldn't lose as a player. And if you lose twice, <laughs> if you lose twice, you're out in the Swiss round. That's the ultimate thing here. And we have some pretty crazy round one matchups. In fact, our first match as the day, as you see in your overlay, is Orange from Team Archon versus Savitz from Team Liquid. And that's going to be really difficult because if you lose one of these matches here, there's no lower bracket you drop. You still play on Swiss, but you can't lose any more from that point on. This is going to be already like a point of discomfort for both these players. Yeah, that's true. But uh, on the other hand, there's also tiebreakers, which um, are important when it comes to pairings yeah. after the cut to the top eight. Because sure. the first place will play against the eighth place, two against the second, uh, seventh place, and so on and so on. Yeah. So Swiss takes the people's yeah. performance throughout the entire tournament and exactly. weighs them as points. If you want more information, go ahead and Google and research it. We'll definitely try to draw up a graphic to show you guys, but here's some shots of the crowd. We definitely have a lot of the familiar faces of players. You can see Ecop from Cloud9. Kranich, a BlizzCon finalist over there also with his teammate Chalky on Dignitas. Sixo, Oskaka with oh, a yeah. chopper hat. For sure. A lot of the players are here gathering. If they're not uh, playing, they're watching. 
And we're about to get started with our first match of the day. Make sure to go out on social media, hashtag DHS15, and let everyone know that this event is going to be awesome. This is kind of what they wanted, right? People outcried yeah. for so long. Why are we doing the eight-man, 60-man Invitationals when we can do a Swiss tournament? It's finally happening. It but is, it's, it is it great, It costs a lot of resources here at DreamHack. They're doing amazing work when it comes to organizing this, this tournament, and it's, it, it's really something big. To organize the first Swiss major tournament, it's really something big. By the way, are they from the same team? They wear the same clothes. It looks <laughs> pretty similar. <laughs> similar, yeah. But uh, it's not. Instead, uh, we're going to start off with... Oh, well, actually, I don't think the classes necessarily are reflective of it. I was like, are they really bringing Priest, both of them? Yeah, that's uh, Well, weird. we're going to fix it in the meanwhile. That's surprising. It's surprising because I look at Warlock, and I think that is the class of the tournament. Like, yeah. I think everyone will bring Warlock because it's just so strong currently in the metagame, and it's it's just really versatile. It can be any type of deck. It could be fast. Yeah. It could be slow. Uh, and it's also really versatile to start off in the series, so I think this is a great pick on both ends. I love the Demon Lock. That's one of my, my favorite deck currently. I love it to, to play on stream. It's really strong also. Um, so I don't blame Savish you bring in this. I hope Savish is that because, you know. Yeah, it seems like Savish no. brought the Demon Lock. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But then uh, we have... From no, Orange. no, it's actually... Oh, uh, no, wait. Oh, this is going to get a little confusing, guys. We recognize the yeah. names aren't correct. Orange is actually the person on the right and Savish is on the left here. And Savitz, he, he looked he yeah, he look like really he coy and cheeky, so he could be playing the Flame Man. Yeah, that would be my guess, too. Like, he played right. the Flame Man because he was like, oh, I got you there, bro. Yeah. There's a one, one mana free two minion, and I don't care about the blowback. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Savitz <laughs> took three blowback right off the bat. <laughs> and Orange is <laughs> really con concentrating on what to do here. Uh, he has a great opening with Ancient Watcher and the uh, Silence, so he will be able to start trading. And this is um, something you need to stop the Demon Lock. Well, when it comes to the matchup in general, Handlock has a huge advantage over Demon Lock. That's one of the worst matchups for, for Demon Lock, actually. Unless you have a really great, um, let's say, Bane of Doom into Mal'Ganis or Doomguard, right. you're kind of doomed. Wait, come on. There are some other ways to win the there matchup as well, right? Well, it's you have to rush and hope no, no Molten Giants for you, bro. Yeah, that's well, even even more than Molten Giants, sometimes they play Molten Giants, but they have no taunts. Yeah, so that's it's also just like, important. you know, Molten Giant, anti kill bot, and then they die anyways. Yep. Uh, you can win by building and mount pressure, uh, but at the same time, Orange doesn't have, you know, too much pressure coming his way. He's stabilized the board, relatively speaking, for now, but the Imp Gang boss here doesn't really have an answer other than the Iron Beak Owl. Yeah, but on the other hand, he will be able to use the Owl here and, and top as well. Yeah, uh, he has uh, Belcher on turn 5. Oh. That's pretty good. That's Pretty that's good. really great draw. What I wanted to say is that the mountain giant is practically dead in this matchup. There's, there's really a small the, chance. The mountain giant. Yeah, the mountain yes. giant uh, is practically dead because, as you can see now, it's it costs seven, but Ooh. double molten. That's great. That's that's really awesome. Because yeah, with the sun fury. The in I guess in about two turns, Savish will be asking himself a question: Do I need to do more damage this turn to drop? Right. Uh, orange below 15. Oh, well, that's, that's a, a great, great card. card no, too. that's an aw awesome card. And this is a deck that the um, the placement of the minions really matters, like a lot. Because you have cards like Abusive Sergeants, uh, Void Terrors, Dire Wolves, and Defender, uh, of Argus. Defender of Argus. So the placement is something that, re that really matters. Another Mount Giant. I can already yeah, see the scenario with the Void Caller, by the way. Uh, Imp producing some Imps and a couple of Demons on board, and then the Mulganis actually. Killing, um, just entering the yeah. board. Yeah, that, that is interesting placement because if you want to eat the the void caller to get the stats on the void terror and also put out demons, then uh, don't you want the one ones to be spawning on the right and yes. you eat that plus? Uh, well, not the void exactly. Caller? In in my experience, the imp gang boss should be always on the far left on the of right. the board. So then you have also better placement for buffs. Uh, like an example, Direwolf, because right. if you spawn the 1 1, mm -hmm. then you have the Direwolf always buffing the 1 1, the newly spawned 1 1, and you have like, you know, constant flow of minions that are buffed, right? And that's that's what you're saying, uh, right? right? So, th so this the placement of the Void Terror uh, of, of the Void Caller is kind of bad. I would tap definitely first tap here. Well, right. doesn't you want to play the Void call void Terror and the. I don't think so. This is not the turn when you want to play the Void okay. Terror yet. Yeah, you just keep the. Whoa. Oh, he's going for okay. the void. Okay, he disagrees. I mean, this is a pretty big tempo swing. If you get if you can get turn five Malganis 
right off the bat here. And you have so many demons as well. You're getting an imp. You have the, the right. walker. Yeah. Wow, this is a massive turn. Good sequencing, too, to make sure that he minimizes the damage taking based off the imp getting boss getting buffed. Yeah, so if, if it gets that's silenced true. now, it still stays at high health. But he has no AoEs here. How much damage is that? No. If he silences Morganis. Wait, actually, I forgot uh, that, the, that the Voiter is buffed beyond measures. Oh my so god, it's like a giant. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that's, that was actually a great turn by yeah. Savish here. And then uh, definitely mm -hmm. worth playing the Voiter here. There's 9, 12, 15. I'm counting right to left. Uh, plus 12, so that's 27 damage. Assuming this could all hit phase. Well, it, you, you did count without the debuff, right? Right, without now that you yeah, silence yeah. the Malganus, you lose 8 damage on the board, so it'd be 19 damage. Twilight Drake plus Silence on the Malganus, but there is two damage existing in hand, right? Yeah, the Set of Vargas, and that's it. So th what do you do? Do you Silence Malganus, or do you Twilight Drake? Well, you Twilight Drake taunt, but that doesn't do anything either. You have to deal with the Malganus by silencing it, because yep. the buff is too big. And that, that would be it. <laughs> and there's a lot of draws that Savitsky could get, like a Power Bowman that would end the game, too, as if it isn't already. Yeah. Now he's counting twice, to be sure. Right. Yeah, so that's but 10, 11, 13, 19, exactly 21. Exactly. He can first tap. To see, what? wait, 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 wait. Is he missing the nine, here? ten? Yeah, he 13, has the damage. Nine, yeah, he has, he has twenty-one damage right now. Yeah, yeah, that's twenty-one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's got this. You sure? Because it doesn't look like it. No, he, he's just. His counter get again. The order doesn't. Of what she attacked doesn't matter. No, okay, for sure. I think he got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Realize there's no way he misses it at this point. He's at two yeah, health. Yeah, at this point, it's just right. one health. Wow, the turn six kill by Savit Savits on uh, on turn. Turn, turn six. six. <laughs> this, this is why Zoo is so powerful, and you can't even really call it officially Zoo. It's just like a yeah. mid-range warlock because it's the tempo that it's lock. able, demon lock. The, the the tempo you can gain from an early void caller is absolutely nuts to be able to summon a Malganus. Um, and not only that, but it also rebounds really well with the life tap, the hero power that draws you a card each turn. Is it allows you to keep up the gas. So even though there yep. are big board wipes, even though there are uh, big opportunities for AOE or patron clears, you can still be able to rebound and pressure your opponent and kill him. The oh only yeah. problem with this deck is um, it might be kind of awkward because of, of the other draws. Like you, you can draw two right. do uh, double Dr. POs, Dr. Yeah. Boom into, let's say, double Doom Guard or Malgan as opening hand. It can be really awkward when it comes to draws, but when it curves out perfectly, it's really insane. Yeah, it's really and hard also. Even if you get a bad draw, but you have a Void Caller on turn 3 or 4, then it can be turned around anyway, even, even with a bad, bad hand. So it's just about the Void Caller in most of the situation. If it gets silenced, then yeah, it's yeah. a bad scenario. All right, so Orange here decides to take his Hunter um, instead of Handlock. Yeah, this, this could be like another thing that also puts Savitz at a severe advantage, is that Orange also revealed that it's Handlock and he didn't win. Yeah. So you know, and it, it could have gone the opposite direction where Savitz, now that Orange knew it was that mid-range demon lock or whatever you want to call it, uh, he could have taken advantage of the mulligans easier if he beat it. But now these uh, these decisions might snowball as time goes on. True. And we are going to see the Grim Patron Warrior versus Hunter, uh, which yeah. is... Um, it seems like mid-range with web spinners. Yeah. And, uh, if so it's it's kind of 50-50, I would say. If we want to pe peg... Warlock as the main actor for this movie called DreamHack Summer 15. The supporting cast is definitely Hunter and Patron. <laughs> I think you will be seeing a lot of decks really mix this idea. And I'm not even really saying mid-range Hunter, but even perhaps Face Hunter or even Control Warrior being in the mix here because you get to play around with the dynamic of lineups. Conquest is not about one particular dominant deck, even though Patron's amazing. Hunter's great and Warlock is it sick. It is about the lineup. It's about the lineup of how you set things. But yeah. on the other hand, we have a lot of Swedish local players that are playing at this tournament. It's not only pro players. And what do you think those guys are going to bring? Harrison and Acidic Swamp. <laughs> like, those are the two cards I'm looking at that everyone's like, I don't care maybe if I can win this tournament, but if I'm going to take down a pro, I'm going to bring a lot of Ooze and Harrison. Well, I did the same <laughs> move against JJ yeah. uh, in deck battles last week, and it didn't pan out because you know, because Patron, frauding berserkers. Yeah, because frauding berserkers and double wins that can mess everyone up. <laughs> For sure. All right, well, we haven't really talked too much about this game, but it's been relatively straightforward. Warrior has curved out, so to speak, where it has a really strong response to Warrior. Or and to, the to Freezing Hunter, Trap didn't have uh, really much to say. Yeah. Yeah, didn't do much, but then again, for Savitz, it's an amazing hand. A Death Spite, Whirlwind, he had Troll Effects, he had the Acolyte of Pain, and That's Bounderish. orange. That's 
All right, orange, orange is the, is the, the is no. Okay. No, no, he's is playing the warrior. Okay, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. The class is where it would switch the thing. Savitz is playing the hunter. Yes, Savitz is playing the hunter. Yes, the overlay has been fixed. It's, everything is correct, I believe. But the warrior's hand was amazing, and it still yeah. is very good. W what well, he needs to draw is an inner rage. That's basically to it. To get the death spike combo, but he opted to go for armor smith instead. Yeah, that's, um, that's kind of weird, because most of the time when you have like a double grim pattern in the hand, even if you play against right. a hunter with Unleash the Hounds, you just want to go with the Grim Patrons as soon as possible, right? Yeah. Not he, he does not know. Necessarily. Well, he does know that this is a mid-range hunter too. Like Web Spinner is very rare to see in aggressive. Oh, Core Rager. That's kind of okay. Core Rager works. Okay, like I haven't actually played much of this card. Uh oh, confessions time. <laughs> I don't know what Core Rager does. It's your opponent. <laughs> No, no, no. Less health? Is it oh, no, no, oh, no. This is the one this if is you're the holding card one when card. You're, no, when you're holling no cards. No cards, okay. Then it's 7-7. Seven, seven. <laughs> then it's... No okay. total guard. Then it gets nerfed. Yeah, then yeah. <laughs> it's a big game hunter range. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. It should be 6-7, right? It should be. That'd be yeah. bounced. Nerfed to 6-7. There's the first Buff to 6-7, that's what By you're By the way, the armor smith was probably played to get a better battle rage. And uh, to deal with the aggression. Right. And there was something each other. But now high main is here, and uh, that's definitely going to be a painful exchange if you're going to take the damage. Well, you have um, double wins, right? So, I think no, no, no. But the death rattle will activate uh, second. Yeah, yeah. So because yeah, the high main was played second, true, the whirlwind won't hit the two twos. I think you can ignore high main for the for now. You can actually go with the green patron turn. Just get the green patron whirlwinds right. and uh, go for face. Because it's not like you really have to defend. You can just start racing. The problem is you use your armor smith, and I think. The right. armor should have been kept after you play the Grim Patron, so you can get more more armor after you spawn the minions. But then again, midrange counter is not that fast. It's, it's not like that fast, but then it, it hu hits like a truck. It hits like a Lothar. Oh. He even speaks my name. Mm. <laughs> Close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this whirlwind is not going to kill off the Tutus, and that's pretty disappointing. Although what it does do is it spawns two additional Grim Patrons. Which can be dealt with... Ease, I would say, right? If, he, if right. he wants to deal with those, because Warriors at 20, which is kind of okay, but if you count the damage, that's four from the Hyenas, five from Kill Command, so so that's already nine. 11 that damage that's sitting and in he, here. And he, he used one Armor Smith, so mm -hmm. what Savage might be thinking, okay, maybe I just go face here and that's it. And race? Yeah, and race, and yeah, start the like race. It's not like he can deal with those Grimpatients. If, if he would see the armor, sp st uh, armor smith still being in his hand, he would have to trade now. Because he wouldn't be able to win the game if the, uh, if the armor smith would just be played after the patrons. But on the other hand, you might be scared of uh, frauding Warsong. Uh, so if you, play, if you play minions. That's why he was thinking about Lothar maybe, mm -hmm. to stop a second whirlwind. That will be devastating and will lose him the game. He's looking at, at 12 points of damage right now. So he will be himself at uh, 16. Well, the web spinner's kind of okay. You can yeah. you can play the web spinner count on drawing unleash the hound, unleash the hound. Sorry, uh, next turn. Then you have like how much damage? Seven damage, I guess. Assuming it clears your board. Yeah, I guess that will but be. But I mean, with Lothab right? played, how do you realistically clear this? Oh, he has a cool taskmaster. Okay, that's pretty easy. Yeah. And uh, that should be a full clear on Orange's side, but is he going to be able to withstand the pressure? The thing about Patron is that it ramps up damage so quickly, especially because of things like Frothing Berserker. That's Frothing a legitimate Berserker's threat. Did not yeah. Also, did you, not always, this deck. you always win the, the board control fights because you have those Patrons. Mm -hmm. And uh, Frothing Berserker is actually funny that the de deck is called the Green Patron Order, where the, where the Frothing Berserker is the key card that wins most of the games. Right. Really? I wouldn't even say so. Like, well, it, it, it is a key card a lot of times if you're playing against a, a lineup that knows about Patron. So if they're bringing Handlock because they feel like it's good against Patron, Frothing Berserker is way more valuable. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But still, the Patron is um, the, the bigger Patron. The Patron is more of a defensive move. Yeah. Than a, than a but you never move. call it like Unleash the Hounds Hunter, even though Unleash the Hounds is kind of what functions similar to Grim what Patron. What about Met Scientist Hunter? Yeah, Met Scientist right. Hunter. Fair enough. By the way, shout out to Web Spinner pulling out another Web Spinner. <laughs> That's uh, I, it. Feels like it happens a little bit more often than it should. But Is it still your favorite card? It, no, Unstable Portal became my favorite card after the e Portal. Right. <laughs> That's right. Well, that's a full board, and that is a Frothing Berserker that's gonna die to well, it. Well, there's a freezing trap, right? No, wait. No, that's, no, an, that's explosive an explosive trap. trap. That's, that's an explosive, explosive trap. trap. Oh, that's explosive. But you do battle rage here, I believe. 
first. You draw. We'll draw four cards. You draw four cards. If you attack into explosive, you still draw four cards. Yes. So I guess at this point, if you draw with battle rage, you get the cards before you attack, so you can choose your options later. So what can you draw to, to somehow win the, to win the game? change the outcome of this? I don't think you can draw anything. Uh, um, we're wins frauding, maybe. Unless he has like commanding shout out of nowhere. Yeah, and just like commanding shout will be destroy insane. insane. Yeah. Whirlwind uh, here wouldn't do you much. Well, the whirlwind will actually free some. But some why would you do that? No, 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 no. no, no that, that's that's like actually whirlwind means he can't attack with it anything in this turn. Yeah. Because he actually we he doesn't spawn more patrons, and then mm -hmm. the ones that also exactly. get out are weakened. Yeah, I th I think he was uh, considering whirlwind if something will survive and uh, spawn patrons. Yeah. Then he can go with warstone. But then as you mentioned, like nothing would actually work there. Well, yeah. anyway, this doesn't look bad for orange. Like. Even with 14 health, but the Belcher will stop like at least 8, I would say. Yeah, and one Q command was already used, so he knows that he is in a good spot. Mm -hmm. Especially because it's a midrange hunter. So it's not like it's going to burst him out of right. 40 of health. And also in this scenario, Whirlwind, like you said, doesn't spawn the patrons. But Whirlwind c can be pretty effective, generally speaking, with such a fragile board. Second Battle Rage, does he need that? No, 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 so that's going to wrap up the game, assuming the bombs don't just straight up kill Gromash. Yeah, that's a chance. It it's is like if it hits Gromash twice for eight. Oh, he didn't. No, wow, that bombs. was some bad boom bots. All right, so Orange is going to tie the series versus Savitz. Warrior out, one Warlock out. So for Savitz, what's left? There's the, the Hunter, it's still there. And, and the, the Warrior. warrior. Also I, is I guess warrior. he will be playing Patron himself. Yes, play he played a lot of Patron on his stream. And he roped a lot of time too. I wonder if he gets the Brawl and Harrison Jones as well. Like he was playing those cards and he yeah. really liked Harrison. Yeah, so Vince really likes bringing Brawl specifically to also kill other patrons. That's mm -hmm. one of the things. Mm -hmm. They always argue if you are the first patron warrior to play in the mirror and get the Grim Patrons onto the board, you, you have a significant advantage. You probably just win there. And if you have Brawl, you can come back, not to mention Harrison's there is too. There is a couple of cool strategies. Green Patron versus Green Patron is really, really specific. Like, you can allow your opponent to go into Patrons and then win with Frodings, but Game 3 is ready here. That midrange Hunter versus Handlock. Yeah, now he knows his Handlock. Hunter's Mark becomes a lot better to keep as a card here. It's probably one of your most valuable cards, especially with Web Spinner, which can trade into it, keep up your, your card count in the hand, and um, you can keep dropping things on curve, which is so powerful with the mid-range hunter. But Orange also knows it's a mid-range hunter. So Orange has a bit more wiggle room. Like, he, he doesn't... That's true. Yeah, it's, if it's not a face hunter, he can mulligan differently. Although, realistically, does Handlock prefer to play against an aggressive hunter or more of a mid-range setup? I think it prefers hunter? against aggressive hunter. I think so, too. Because, because it has more tools to deal right. with that, like mortal coils. Uh, like, uh, Dark Bombs are more important against anything in that deck because it just kills one minion, whatever minion. Because there's nothing with more than three health, right? Yeah. Well, uh, Misha. Well, Misha. Because, yeah, because okay. what Face Hunter tries to do is optimize damage per mana crystal or yeah. damage per card. And what they do is they try to put the pressure on nonstop and they will drain you to Molten mm. Giant health range. Versus mid range could take their time setting up and then do 25 in a turn because they have a high main and a low theb and like kill a kill command, command quick shot. Yeah. It's like. At that point, it's really difficult to set up Molten Giant to really race your opponent, versus Handlock's really good at stabilizing at low points, but still being able to outrace their opponent. I which is super fun oh, sorry, but which is super funny because the that thing that you, you just said about the matchup changed immediately after adding the heal bolt. Because right. without the heal bolts, it was a really, really bad matchup for the Handlock. But after the heal bolts, it changed, and now the Handlock prefers to play against the aggressive ones <laughs> rather than the mid-range ones. But it changes again if you know what you're playing against. Because if I know that I'm playing versus midrange hunter, I will not keep the zombie chow. Maybe I'll just go sure. for uh, the twilight drake, mountain giant, and try to have the midrange game. I would always keep zombie chow against a hunter, like always. Yeah, there's no reason not to. Yeah, it, it doesn't get any better. Yeah. The, the All right, maybe the zombie chow was not the the best call there, but you will maligan for the bigger stuff. All right, so Savitz is uh, gonna be in an awkward spot here just because of the mana curve and the usage here. Uh, he was hovering over the Haunted Creeper. Seems reasonable considering that it make his board as resilient to AoE as possible. Mm -hmm. There are mm -hmm. options good like point. Hellfire or yeah. Shadow Flame in case he got too good of a board. I would think about sacrificing Web Spinner just to get the draw, uh, the draw first and maybe it would have been better 
something better than right. Web Spinner. You know that he's not going to be playing Mountain Giant because he already played a, a card. If you're going first as the Handlock, you have to tap on turns two and three in order to play a turn four Mountain Giant. Yep. And so the best creature that can come out here, or minion, excuse me, is uh, the Twilight Drake. So I guess he's saving that for the Twilight Drake to use it with the Hunter's Mark, and then he can gain some pretty significant tempo on the board. That's a good point. That's a pretty good curve, by the way, for Savitz, even, um, for Orange, even though he doesn't have the, the Shadow Flame yet. Uh, just Double have kill commands. Yeah, that, that's pretty nasty. The two kill commands gives a lot of range possibilities here, and you're always calculating based off one. <laughs> 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 okay. That's the second time that that's happened. Awesome. Now that's, that, see, the, the first time is kind of like, man, but the second time, <laughs> that's awesome. The third yeah, time is. is like, okay, well, who from Blizzard's here watching <laughs> this game, controlling the RNG with the button in the back? Well, the, the knife juggler feels really bad in this this turn, but I think it's the necessary evil here. D is it though? Because the thing is, the web spinner at worst will give you another beast, so that way you can have the kill commands. And knife juggler doesn't have to be susceptible to AOE here. Yeah, yeah. and you kind of want to bait AOE or maybe silence the watcher, or even if you get uh, defender but you Vargas. Won't, won't bait AOE with that kind of board. It That's true. It's happen. pretty weak. Well, you yeah. will bait maybe defender Vargas, so then you can play juggler and get some value from the. No, knives. that will be well, We're yeah. coming into turn five, but I would have guessed is like, you no, know, this this will be a belcher yeah, turn because there was no giants. Sure. That that was like he was really thinking a lot about turn four. So my guess is okay. He wants to curve out on turn five because he really thinks. Badly, how, how I want to play the Twilight Drake this turn, right? So, but Argus was a possibility as well, and then Twilight Drake was better. Than when Argus. did he play the Ancient Watcher? Turn two, turn three, I believe. That was a really weird move, by the way. Yeah, we actually didn't talk much about it, but there's a lot of decisions that end up going to it. So, what are the chances of another web spinner? Well, let's see. Oh, uh, well, it's um, and Chaka Panther is still it's fine. A pussycat. <laughs> I, I think it's a little bit more ferocious than a, than a house cat there. Um, the Jungle Panther is still susceptible to AoE, but the stealth is really powerful because, again, that latent damage where you don't have to attack, you can just yep. sit on it and just attack at the opportune moment is really powerful, especially in conjunction with Kill Command. If the board ever becomes clear to the point where Handlock doesn't want a Hellfire because it puts themselves too low of a health, mm -hmm, of mm -hmm. a health count, then Jungle Panther sits there and then it becomes forever a Kill Command activator. It also yep, kills half exactly. giants. It also kills. Oh yeah, yeah half yeah. a giant too, to help you push through in case it gets taunted. The the horrible the, the horror scenario for Hunter is they taunted Molten Giant, but with Defend of Argos because the nine health is just pushing it over range of anything that has like e easy um, like let's say um, Eagle from Bow Kill Command. That's eight, right? You're missing one damage to kill the giant, so that's horrible scenario for the Hunter. But for now, he didn't see any giants yet. So that's good for him. Horizon on six, a very powerful play for Headlock. But then Savitz has the double kill command, so he's just uh, waiting patiently. Hold on. Kill. Wait, wait, how much damage is that? That's 10, that's five, 15, that's 15 damage. That's yeah. six mana, guys, seven with the coin, so. We can't play anything for the coin. Yeah, just. But can he set up for next turn? N well, he should attack and not say, I have two kill commands. If he plays one this turn, he would be saying, okay, I have the second one in my hand. So right. I guess. This will be so this should be something different, but he should push for damage here. So I guess he will be playing coin hero power this wow. turn. That's <laughs> it's, that works out pretty nicely. This yeah, shoot actually, the that, was, that was really right. That was, that was, off, that was ideal. The yeah, way that, that they kind of panned out. Yeah, that was perfect. So really now he perfect. doesn't have to give up his board. His and he doesn't need to push for damage also. Yeah. Because the Emperor is not threatening at all this time. Yeah. Does he need a coin hero power? He can still do that next turn. You yeah, get two exactly. kill commands and coin hero power. And uh, so yeah. if you if you hero power here, you don't play uh, around Molten Giant. Because then oh my be gosh. A no, this is GG, right? Yeah, Orange keeps getting these double mountain well, giant right, hands, but they're not useful. Yeah, he has oh, you're right. Here. Lothab can uh, help deny that. That's if if he feels like he should do well, that. Well, he, yeah, he, he doesn't still want to, you, right? Like, because no, I don't think so. You don't have anything else, like just playing Vanilla Lothab? Well, well, if you if you two, if you double kill command next turn, how much damage will he have on board? You'll have well, two, four, seven, seventeen plus hero power is that's eighteen. That's actually uh, 19? twelve damage with the coin and hero power. So yeah, ni nineteen damage total. Oh, you just need to, to deal three and have a beast. Well, he Orange will play load up here just to deny the possibility of kill double commands, command? hunter's mark. Maybe there's a second one in the deck. Who knows? And uh, there's he knows that also there's a coin. So the load up has the best value this turn, right? 
before before the does uh, it though? Yeah, like the, the the thing is like if you play Lothep, do you win ever? Well, the what are, what does the other play? Doctor Boom? Yeah, maybe. Well, because you this <laughs> is nothing that you want to How play. How much damage is there on board? There's seven. five, seven, nine with hero power, so there's six more. Six more from a hunter. I guess that's really easy. Midrange? Yeah, that's like animal companion into into you know. You always know. have her. You will have, you have five not mana. Random half her. You have five mana left, so we will have animal companion, right? And Q commands. Yeah. Now I, I, I can understand Lothab. It's like it's blocking the coin, as you said, and Q commands. But it's not winning him the game. He needs to draw something relevant next turn anyway. Otherwise, he loses. Yeah. So. I mean, what, what? At this point, Savitz has nine mana next turn, so he can jungle Panther, double kill command on the coin. So <laughs> yeah, that's he really actually sweet. has like all reason to push into here and try to maximize his damage. By the way, insane juggles to the face and to Lotha. Wow. I mean, I, I feel like he can just go and shove, right? Yeah, it's Lothab's like all already in. played. Yeah. And Handlock can't generate twenty two damage based off of this unless he's playing like a Leroy. Well, even though we've seen the Torison, it's not possible to play. You just put I him on on two so he can't tap two. Healbot Shadow he Flame would be maybe an option. No, no, I, I, even with that, you're just sure that he won't tap. So if he, if he plays like AoEs, then he can't right. heal, so it's basically dead. Yeah, but even Healbot Shadow Flame is not enough. So well, I mean, still kills he has, him next he has two Healbots. Yes, yeah, so that's, that's 16. That's still not enough. 20, that's 20. So that's 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 12, 22, and, juggle, and two juggles. So, yeah. So yeah. I guess he's dead then here. Unless... There's a tap that can save him, but Orange, in his opinion, I mean, there's nothing else to do. There's two heal bots here that you should play because that maximizes yep. your chance to live. But these two mountain giants, again, have been sitting dead for so long, and that's going to give Sabitz a 2 1 lead. All right, so Sabitz is going to take game number three and have a lead 2 to 1 versus Orange. And uh, that handlock is struggling. Well, a handlock's best matchup is Patron, right? Yeah. And, right. and that's coming if up. If Orange has. That is a mage. If that's a freeze mage, and that's basically... Oh, wow. That's so hard for him. Like what do we want to do with the mage here against so a warrior? Which uh, mage is, is it best freeze versus... Mage? Which mage is what best versus tempo patron? Mage? Tempo mage? Well, tempo mage struggles against uh, patron too. Yeah, it does. I mean, the, the tempo mage is great against hunter. You know, That's where you can bring and yeah. kind of introduce it in your lineup to make sure you're not weak to that. Although, I'm not sure. Freeze mage has always fallen in and out of popularity, but orange has been a player who loves freeze mage. I mean... A lot of players enjoy that type of thing. Especially if you're playing um, Patron, though. I mean, how does that even fit in the entire lineup overall? I'm not sure. That was an inner rage. So I guess this is Patron. Yeah, yeah this and is for uh, sure Patron. But <laughs> yeah, but how does the, like the Freeze Mage fit in? In the, the early stages of Hudson, inner rage was a staple in the Warrior, just for the Gromash activator. That's right. That's how Artosis won BlizzCon. He won with an inner rage play. Yeah. And a weapon. Gromash, Art, uh, Gromash and inner rage. Thanks to Ecop. <laughs> that was the Ecop Warrior. That was the Ecop Warrior. All right, so we mentioned that this is the, the really now bad matchup. Now Warriors are Heroes of the Storm thing. Totally. Yeah. A very bad matchup for Green Patron. And uh, that's because it's hard to get through all those taunts. You have to draw a lot of cards. And you also have to deal with the big creatures. So yes, the Handlock has just easy traits with this deck. Unless those charge, Warlock has always, right. almost always an answer to whatever happens on the board. That but Acolyte was so important here. It's, it's very important to get those draws, the, the Battle Rage, Acolyte, and have that Execute as well. So for Savitz, that's a very good hand to start with. Also, armoring up a 2-2 is not saying to your opponent, okay, I'm Patron. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. I could be Control Warrior. Yeah. One thing that I do want to draw attention to is how Savitz takes his deck. We saw players like Archon players, specifically Zelay, likes to put in Big Game Hunter into their mm -hmm, decks, and that mm -hmm. does improve the handlock matchup it does. by a big margin. Um, but Savitz also is the guy who likes to run Brawl, so I'm, I'm curious to see if that ends up being a factor at all, even though it does tend to struggle against the defensive handlock player, generally speaking. This is a very difficult turn, by the way. Uh, he could consider silencing or maybe just finding Twilight Drake into Twilight Drake. Setting up those Twilight Drakes early versus the Warrior is so important right. as well. I would go to for the Twilight Drake, to be honest. I think I would go for the Silence, it's actually. It is a little risky, considering that you don't want Patron to draw as much as possible. It's a combo deck, and combo is supposed to draw cards. I think that's the primary goal of it. Yeah, Twilight Drake is risky because they can actually activate it with Taskmasters or Wuwin. 
So now it's giant turn. No, now we can Twilight Drake into Coin Mortal Coil if you really want to. Yeah, I think that's the best. Uh, maybe giant. Well, giant. Just giant. Yeah, just giant Mortal Coil. But then, uh, wait, if you use one, two cards here, then giant is for six, so next turn is for five, so if you tap, it's for four. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. So, yeah, giant here is way better than the Twilight Drake. You might be thinking I want to play Torison next turn. Uh, with the coin, but then again, your hand is so good that I don't think you, you need yeah. that reason. I, I think you actually can play the tower send because then Mortal Coil becomes zero mana, and uh, that's a huge factor because zero mana cards are basically broken, in my opinion. Always. Yeah, but if you go, so if you if you coil now, uh, you will not be executed. So the eight eight is going to attack. You will of damage. Right, the pressure. Yeah, the pressure that you gain from. The Mountain Giant being able to put Handlock, or not, sorry, the Handlock, the Patient Warrior in a very defensive posture makes him uncomfortable. Yeah, so this is a this is a greedy play from Orange. Uh, and, it, the, I mean, double execute is part of the valuable yeah, part of defeating Handlock. This is pretty good for Savic so far. Savic has so much options to deal that one point of damage to the Giant, and even with a weapon. I was actually thinking, why not use weapon here? Just to get the damage to your hero, because you need that battle rage as soon as possible. That's that's also a fair criticism. Generally speaking, one of the, the problems that Patron Warrior has is battle rage can sometimes do nothing. Yeah. You have too much. You have full health. You don't have any damage. Minions. Look at that! Oh, that's wow. a Dick Swampoos. That's I mean, a great, great uh, card to play versus we're, Patron. We're, we're talking about that. That's going to be one of the cards we should pay attention to. How people use yeah. not only Harrison Jones but the Acidic Swampoos, because weapon classes are really dominant. At the you moment. lose or you lose. Well, I mean, you don't lose right now if you don't use the Fiery War Axe. Oh, obviously, yeah. No, you want to right. keep that for the Death Spite. Well, this was an obvious choice on turn, especially because he didn't use the coin last turn. So what Savic needs, uh, more or less, is the Frawling, and he needs some kind of board setup. It's like how you win this matchup. Is right. You draw as many cards as possible, and then you set up a double Frawling kill on wa or one Frawling right. kill with He can go Armor Smith, Waywind, Battle Rage to draw three cards. And I think he has to do that. Yeah, drawing cards again is imperative. Even though you have the combination of the Grim Patron and the Whirlwind, you don't want to save it. Especially because Patron... What is Patron even effective against Handlock? It's against it's the Iron Beak Owls, can be. the Taunt Giver. Uh, I mean, it, it can generally be, but you don't get to really punish and kill the Handlock with Patron Combo unless it's late stages in the game. It's not about Patron Combo. It's more about, like, there's, there, are there are two approaches to, the, to, the, to this matchup. So one is obviously win with the Frotting. Just uh, allow Handlock to play a couple of cards and then win with the one combo burst. Sure. But the other is just exhausting removal. So you force first page like if you get two patrons, for example, you force the first patron, you get like four patrons, you, for you force a Hellfire or Shadow Flame, and then you go with the second one. And in certain points, that strategy works because Handlock will not have a second AoE, will not be able to deal with the second patron wave, even though they don't have charge. You just put them on board. Right, but it doesn't affect, it doesn't ac accomplish as much on the board as you'd like it to be because it's not highly impact. There's not a lot of minions you can take advantage of. Almost all of them have three attack or higher. And not only that, it's like if you're behind on board ever against Handlock and you have to use patrons, you're not going to win. Yeah, they have, they have just like a, they have that's a big true. wall. Tons like, well, I created four patrons, and they all go into the giant. Yeah, it's mostly you mostly do it when you're ahead or like when the board is empty. You just right. go with a patron and then. Double Drake here is one of the most powerful moves you can ever do against Patron Warrior. Well, they can't deal mana. with that. Yeah. And there's <laughs> <six mana. laughs> it's well. ridiculous. The oh, Warriors. wow. That's a gr pretty great card to draw, too, right around now. But do you want to use it right now? Well, you have... Yeah, you want to use that right now. Because it doesn't die immediately to the Twilight Drake. Mm. And also, you have two combo parts in your hand. So, if you draw... Wait, what about Twilight, um, Death Spite this turn? You can't really play anything else if you go Death Spite, so you kind of waste your turn for Death Spite to be played. And uh, with Torison at least, you hope there yeah. is no Defender of Argus. So not only you get a lot of value with the mana reduction, you also put mm -hmm. something on board that possibly maybe will challenge those drakes. I don't know how much this is relevant, but Savitz should be able to put Orange on Mortal Coil. Orange played the Giant and waited for about a minute. Against the loot hoarder, yeah. So that mm -hmm, I mean, mm -hmm. that's like a huge community. I have Mortal Coil, by the way. That's why he should so do f first yeah. think about the move and then play the giant. Now uh, that's a lot, that's a totally a life coach thing. So I can tell you've been practicing with him. Now that he has Emperor Thorsten, it's like, well, that's an easy trade for a Twilight Drake plus that uh, plus a Mortal Coil. And so I like the test bet really a lot this turn. Yeah. Instead of the Emperor here. So it's, why is that? Powerful move. Because it's a it also set up it's threatening. Uh, your opponent, because if you just play Emperor, it's like, okay, I have at least two turns to do something. 
uh, but if there's a death spite on on the board, it's like saying to your opponent, okay, it's eight mana, I can have Throwing Berserker or maybe something else with Warson Commander deal a lot of damage to you right now. But he doesn't know that Orange has the Acidic Swampus. So what turns out to be a good move, now is a horrible move. Yeah, it becomes really awkward. And this Defender of Argus will pump it up, so it's My a pretty significant board out. that you have to deal with. And now it's, again, a direct challenge to Emperor Thorson, even though it will reduce the cost of your cards, and most likely you'll have to play it. And there was already two executes used. Yeah. So that's also huge for, uh, for Orange to know that. And also Savitz doesn't have any more draw, so at this point he's stuck with the cards he has. Uh, there, there are no whirlwind effects, only the Inner Rage. So he can't generate that much damage. He, he really needs to draw, what, like a Battle Rage, maybe? Didn't he use two? He used one for sure. His... Mm. I think he still has the second one. Yeah, which challenging is that now that his hand doesn't effectively address too much of the board here, Dark oh, Bomb's a perfect pretty good draw, draw here. Perfect draw. Perfect draw? Well, you want to get rid of the two free creature, because it's... Oh yeah, good point, good point. So you get some value off of that. You want If you want to get creatures on board against Patron, you want to, to have at least three attacks on those. Yeah, but on the other hand, like he's seen double execute, he has the five two taunts, so he is in a good spot, he would just also go for face. Like I would not even um, be hating on just silencing the Tori Sunder and going ham with everything. That's interesting. So this is another way that Savis can try to climb back, having Gromash as a finisher on top of Frothings. But, but it's, um, it's it's just a little too complicated. You with need how to draw on our weapons to deal with the creatures. Right. And if you do that, you're getting really low. You will get nine damage next turn. Yeah. So the Gromers this turn is like the only option to yeah, win still true. win the game. Yeah, it's true. What do you guys think about um, using patron here? So like Warsong Patron, NRH Patron and Clear the Taunts. It it doesn't it doesn't accomplish much. Like, Gromash can effectively do the same thing, and you can keep those Warsong Commanders for what you actually need to use it for. That's interesting. Well, he can be GH it if he wants to. Yeah, but I, I don't think he does. I, I think so. There's there's not really many uh, Patron Warriors that end up running Dr. Boom. So that's pretty much the only target other than a big Frothing Berserker, which also he's you don't really need a big game hunter. Really getting close to killing Savitz. He will deal 8 points of damage this turn. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, yeah, Big Game Hunter is more of a tempo swing here. Like, uh, even if you have a perfect trade, because 4-2 or 4-5 for a damage yeah. damage is okay. But the damage of the deal to your opponent's face is more important And I here. think that's it, actually. That's uh, 12 points of damage, 15 with, uh, with Belcher. And there's well, no I mean, target to, to spawn more minions from, you know. Well, you got the Inner Rage, so that helps you tr create another um, Grim Patron. So you can take off... You can take off the 7 damage off the board. You can even use this other War Song Commander if you really feel desperate to survive. To and kill off the big game hunter, so for example. Yeah, that's true. But it's still over because there is a Shadow Flame. So even though there is no lethal for now, that's 12, right? So he has to kill something. Yeah, it's got to go. But this is already a really difficult matchup. This is what Handlock was designed to do in the lineup, to kill the Patient Warriors. And so Orange is able to execute his game plan, although he still can't kill him just yet. Yeah, it's eight. Yeah. Here is probably just heal bot shadow flame. Maybe you can. What tap about first. tap? Tap first. Yeah, obviously tap first. Because you would have. Uh, would, would you have lethal with dark bomb second battle? No, no, that's not enough. No, you will not. But you can tap still uh, because you have eight mana. Yeah. From here, Orange just has to make sure not to make any moves, which can be exploited by. I guess the remaining three or four card combinations, but he might not even have to think that deep. I think doing whatever best is on the board, not thinking about the future, is <laughs> more powerful than just you I, know, I overthinking like stuff that can happen sure. here. I like what he did, by the way, because this this way he reduces the number of minions on board, so he's not uh, dead to like War Song double frauding whirlwinds or like. Warsong, Patron, Whirlwind, Battle Rage into some crazy stuff. And well. he knows that cards are affected by Torison still, so... Yeah, there's really no way for uh, Savis to stabilize here. He does. He dies to the simplest damage point. I mean, he'll, he'll be dead to pretty much whatever Handlock draws if, of damage. If it draws Hellfire, if it draws... A, if it plays a second, second Dark Bomb, bomb even yeah. a Jaraxxus. 
off the top here, we'd be able to, to kill him. Well, that's still not lethal, but... Yeah. That's it's a little uh, uncomfortable, tap, but course. you're fine. Yeah, you tap, you could probably just silence uh, No, you whatever. tap and you'd hope for Hellfire, and that's basically it. Because if you draw Hellfire, you win the game. Yeah, but <laughs> if you if you don't get anything, you can just uh, play sa uh, safe here. Like, you don't have to go for phase. You might just uh, attack one of those... Uh, you want to kill Warson Commander. That's <laughs> less Warson Commanders. So every single draw apart... No, every single draw is basically dead for a warrior. Because he, he, he can only attack once with the pattern. So what does it do? Nothing really. Just set up more damage on board and that's it. The audience watching. A lot yeah, of very players. Closely. We had so many notable players playing in this tournament. I was just going through the list and it's crazy. We have people from China. We have people from all over Europe, from US. It's like invitational, but it was open. So it's 2-2. It's, two -two. it's um, yeah. Now we're going to see Grim Patron versus Mage. We don't know what Mage is that. What will be the best Mage? For orange, against patron, against patron. No, oh, there's major domo mage. You played uh, it a lot. I have no idea is if you're talking seriously or, or not. No, it's pretty you sick. Actually got the you have, to, you have flame strikes deal with the board. You have a lot of ice barrier and stuff like that. How do they? Okay. Do? It's it's actually pretty <laughs> sick. It's like the one good matchup. Seems <laughs> like <laughs> this one seems like freeze mage to me. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, freeze mage has a really bad time against patron. Like it's still you think so? Because the armor gain is still pretty high. Still, it's pretty high. The pressure. Um, yeah. If if the, if the freeze mate doesn't hit turn nine Alex Straza into threatening lethal next turns, then just the warrior plays armor arm rocks each single to each each turn and just waits for the moment when he can drop double yeah. armor smiths and like double win win the death spite or whatever gain thirty points of armor. That Mulligan and finish was, by the way, really interesting. Savitz was thinking of throwing away fireworks. Um. Well, what do you need to do that for? Well, he's not sure what mage it is. Oh, yeah, yeah. of course, yeah. Y if, it's <laughs> like, if it just happens to be a pretty aggressive tempo mage with Same flame waker. wakers, yeah, you, you absolutely you need that, need that to yeah, chop yeah, down yeah. the sorcerer's yeah, course, apprentices uh, or whatever comes out of that unstable portal. Yeah, but he was definitely looking for armor smith. He knows that armor smith yeah. is good versus any kind of mage. And he still doesn't know what kind of mage it is after turn two. Right. You know, Mad yeah, Scientist, Mad Scientist doesn't say anything. Is it a mere entity that comes out of here? Yep. It's, it's still very uncomfortable, but for now, we know it's an orange's hand. And he does have one card that is beneficial to turning this matchup around in his hand, and that's this Emperor is, Thorson. This is how you want to win control matchups against um, Warrior and Patron, but you need to get Antonidas too. Antonidas is also key because you reduce a lot of those spells, but Emperor Thorson allows you to open up a world of plays based around being able to do a lot of combo damage and uh, maybe even freeze the board. So I, I'm not counting Orange out of this game just yet, even though a couple factors did go against him. So he's got the coin um, and he does have the armor smith early on. But yeah. he doesn't have the Green Patron yet. And Green Patron was one of the key cards to get the big board and get that value from Iron Smith. Well, I would say that the armor smith is more important yeah, to get than Patron. Too. Yeah, it's like. Uh, I wouldn't even play the armor smith here. Like, you don't need it at all. You just want to keep it in your hand when you get your bo full board and just armor up. Right. You know? I think he's just going for full armor value in general. Plus, uh, the armor smith. Well, he has battle rage. Right. Yeah, he, yeah, he has that's battle a good rage point, here, yeah. which is super big to get three cards. And that was why even taking the early game damage was so important for Warrior. Wow, now it seems that Savitz has everything. Yeah, now, I mean, he knows already. Just seeing the loot hoarder already indicates strongly that it's Freeze Mage. Yep. There, there's very few mages that still play that. Like, I guess Control Mage would play loot hoarder, but you can get the idea that it's Freeze Mage. Also, mm -hmm. there's no good way for Orange to deal with this Frolling Berserker. Oh, well, well then I would there it is. He's kind of gotten one, but it's still open to an Execute. It Based is, off the but weapon. if there's no Execute, then the Doomsayer is better played. Uh, I mean... Doomsayer is better played at the start of the game than later during the right. stages when there's more mana to actually use charge creatures and the more chances to draw the executes. Also, come on, it's much Ooh. better than Fireball into Frotting. But he's got a kill. He's, he can use the, the Dread Corsair because it's cheaper and then Interrage that. Yeah, that's true. Is that worth dumping your hand? Because what can he do on six mana? He can Blizzard. Now you still keep your board-ish. Well, so. mm. with four cards, I think it's definitely worth risk. Yeah, that's a huge investment. Like there, there will be. I mean, it's an investment that has a big payoff because you have a frothing berserker that's gaining attack, so you yeah. are developing your board. And if he doesn't have the blizzard, which he doesn't. I mean, look how much damage exists already. Don't oh. look at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a blizzard. Now. What a happy coincidence! 
And that Armorsmith is doing its, uh, its work, by the way. That's true. Armorsmith gaining four health is still nothing to scoff at. Obviously, if Orange would not have Blizzard, it would be, it would be much better for Savitz. But no. the Warzone Commander is still active. It is true, but I don't know if that's relevant yeah, right that's now. Yeah, not, it's not. <laughs> but it, it's just another body that can do damage here. I would have to imagine that Savitz cares more about armoring up, too, like as the process goes. You can't play Emperor Thoris in here. You're going to get punished way too hard. But so. you, can, you can think about it, right? Right. Like, you want to take your time. This is uh, the last game of this important match for Orange. Right. No, losing here means you're 0-1 to start off Swiss, and you need a 7-1 sc or 6-1 score as your minimum in order to yeah. go to the but top But this is eight. not entirely bad, actually. Losing round one means that you are going to play the losers throughout the day. Because you start 0-1, <laughs> then you play a guy who is 0-1 as well. W what if you match into another person that has a tough matchup, too? Like, for example, later today, Firebat's going to play Zelay. And, he, and oh, the don't loser spoil, of this, dude, go ahead and play it. It's already posted oh, yeah, online yeah. Okay. <laughs> on <laughs> no, round no, one. So it, then what if, what, if he, what if Orange or Savitz lose here and have to play that? It can happen. Obviously, And your tournament's over. Obviously, being 7-0 is the best, but, yeah. you know, you're playing versus losers. Come on. How much does it stink that you still have to ping and you give him more armor? It's like, this Falling Berserker obviously has to die, and you want to Frostbolt the Acolyte so it stops drawing. Without the Antonidas, you can't win. Yeah. No. When you use the Frostbolt, uh, you will... Oh. That's tough. I mean, That's it's... a tough decision. I think oh, there is a Taskmaster, so you can draw more cards The now. perfect punishing card! Yeah. That's well, great. Do you well, play the Frothing wait, wait, with wait, it, though? Frothing Berserker? Now you play the Frothing, yes. Uh, we'll see, we'll see. You mean like you play Frothing first to get the plus one attack there? Hmm. Oh, yeah, he also gets the charge damage, too. I would love to see the Frothing Berserker here. By the way, Savitz can't sneeze with his eyes open. Me I too, heard that man. you can, Me too. can sneeze, uh, uh, no, can breathe through your nose when you have your tongue out. Can you try that? You can't breathe through your nose with your tongue out? Yeah. You should try that. Frodan is choking right now, so... No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, 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 I got you, I got you. I, I see what you're trying to do. Thankfully, I wasn't on camera. Thank God. <laughs> you are evil, you Polish people. Emperor Thorsten here doesn't even impact that much. It's just your best play at the moment, unfortunately. What is the way for Orange to win, by the way? Like, is the only way to block or draw? Or maybe go to fatigue somehow? Just no, fire? Freeze Mage will get to fatigue almost First. as quickly as yeah. Patronids because of the draw mechanics in the deck. Yeah, and he already draw right. four cards from Battle Rage, right? Wait, how much? This is four, six, ten, twenty-two damage. He can pop the ice block with uh, the Gromash. Ten, twelve, sixteen, it's twenty-two damage. 19, tw yeah, twenty-two. Yeah, right, and That's pretty five impressive. armor, six armor, six armor. Yes, because you have Inner Rage too. Interrage is one armor. Yeah. And then then oh, yeah, that's five. five Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, five, six. Yeah. That's Never really mind. impressive. And looking at six cars. Uh, You'd want to also kill Thor. Is there a way to kill Thor's in and pop the ice block? What here? about uh, Interrage? So. Interrage, um, uh, Interrage the Acolyte to draw on one more card, but then you deny yourself yeah, pop the, the ice block. Yeah. Mm. Uh. I think you're fine with popping the ice block here. Well, that's the, that's the priority. That's priority number one. Popping ice block puts him on a fine finite clock where he has to generate the, the ability to live. Okay. All I right. like this. Plus he draws a card for, uh, to see so maybe he, he wants picks to up inner rage. See first battle rage? Oh wow, he's going to take five blowback. I didn't right. like that at all, to be honest. Now he doesn't, doesn't clear. I think he's doesn't acknowledging that Thorson is probably like the only way that he can come back if he gets like two sweeps on the Antonitis and plays ice block for one mana and he has, you know, Frostbolt yeah, now for zero mana. Yeah. So he's saying, I really can't lose from this position if I kill Thorson versus if I go for the Ice Block pop, I probably might win next turn. Yeah. But I also give him an opening to win. Also, it's, it's not like Gromash is easy to take uh, to, to take care. You know, it's yeah. like he's seen one Dooms, uh, Doomsayer already with, uh, with the Nova. So like, how do you deal with Gromash if you don't have Doomsayer and Nova combo? He's got a Frostbolt or Ice Lance. Mm. Or maybe these guys know. Do they look like they know? <laughs> I don't think any. I think a lot of people, unfortunately, think they they, they might know. But being in <laughs> orange's seat is really difficult yeah. to navigate through because 
Patron Warrior is not only putting on this pressure, but it's also keeping a lot of card count up. That Battle Rage early on was so significant to be able to get that card draw mechanisms and be able to get three cards guaranteed off of the Acolyte. Get out of here. Like, you can't keep up with that card no, pace. No, no, let's get in here. Ah, ah <laughs> well played, sir. That's an emo Well split. played. <laughs> they need the Frodan here to come out for nine ninety nine. That's something I'd pay for. <laughs> and I do the voice acting for free. Just give me royalties with the nine ninety nine. I think Brian Kilber wanted to do a Landrill for Hunter. For Hunter. Do we have a Landrill here? No, we don't have a Landrill. You guys are going too far awesome. to the the wild. Though I have no clue what the heck you guys are talking about. Brian Kilber's um, hero was a Landrill in World of Warcraft TCG, and that was also a card in the World of Warcraft TCG. Uh, I mean, sorry, in World of Warcraft, that was his character, and it was also the character in the World of Warcraft TCG. The yeah. Alandrill Hunter. You're speaking Polish to me, Lothar. I don't understand. Okay, <laughs> yeah, well, I can switch too. Man. <laughs> Please we speak English. Yeah, I got you. you we did cast uh, Polish. So it's basically from um, from the Wild TCG days. Yeah. They're saying. Okay, yeah. gotcha. It's gotcha. a Bra Brian Kibler impersonation in Wild TCG. Yeah. Well, clearly we have nothing else oh, much really? to contribute about this game if we're talking about that. The Antonidas here draw could it have been big. If there would be a, a Frost Nova. <laughs> right. There, there's just too much health on the Warrior to really make it significant, though, because he, you yep. also have to consider Freezing Face because of um, the weapons that might come out here. Yeah, that's right. Like, even if you Antonidas Frost Nova here, it's still possible that right. you're dead to the weapon strike. Yeah, but you have to take your chances. Like, Yeah, I think so, for sure. But he doesn't have the Frost Nova, so what he has to do here He's is... Just the uh, double Frost Bolt and Double Ice Frost Bolt, Ice Lance, Ice Lance. yeah. Oh, yeah, he can... Well, he's not dead yet. We don't see a weapon. But there's an Execute. So oh, that's okay, actually. Ice Bear is also appropriate. Assuming your opponent doesn't have Warsong Commander, number two. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's the way you can get punished. Can Orange actually turn around this game? No, I don't think so. It, I mean, it's a remote possibility, but I'm going to peg it at a little bit under 1%. He has to use those Fireballs to clear the minions. So there will be no more phase damage because now the Antonidas will die as easy as it looks like. So like. He doesn't have enough damage to even kill him right now. Like if you pair together yep. all of the uh, fireballs and the pyroblast, that's only 32 damage and war's at 40. So how do you even how do you even kill him? You need Alex Strauss. And there's a second armor smith right. also in the deck. And your hero power is falling short one <laughs> each turn. So it just piles on. Mm -hmm. Well, there is a minion that maybe if survives will deal some damage. No, you're right. There, there is a remote possibility. Maybe Orange has Mally Ghost out of nowhere and just surprises us. Mally Ghost, whoa! Oh, but well, there's the second execute. Oh, yeah, there's a second execute. I mean, Alex Strasser then comes what to play and doesn't have another. Oh, he has big game hunter, right? Well, yeah. <laughs> 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 all right. Well, I guess uh, Savis so really does have all the answers. Yeah, he's ready. Yeah. Okay. All right. So here you just fireball a ping Grimash. You have uh, four mana left. I guess you can just play your minions. Because those minions will try to deal some damage. But that's basically it. You don't have to play the ice block. Eight points. I, I'd even consider playing Doomsayer here after the loot order, just to. Or actually, he can play um, the ice block. That's a bigger priority. That's a smart call. But assuming uh, he had the opportunity to, I think being able to be preemptive on the board is also key. You just need to stop the pressure as much as possible. But the ice block was definitely correct here. Almost with pa uh, I mean, armor up pass. I, I don't oh. really like the Frodding Berserker in this situation. If you play Frodding, you lose Frodding to Fireball. So basically you are... Uh, he has... Oh, well, I think he has 8 damage guaranteed with the uh, Patron, Inner Rage, and Warsong anyways. Oh, look at that. Now, that's that's the reason why I didn't like the Frodding Berserker. I think it's fine, though, because he still has 8 damage from the hand with the Inner Rage and the Warsong Commander on the Grim Patron. That'll but create he has to draw a 5 that. and 3. Yeah, but why would you... Drop the Frothing Berserker. Like, why? Why would you care about it? Because you have Warsong Commander for charge damage. What to do? So what I think the only way that it could backfire is if his opponent has like a really cheap Alex Straza, and he even then he can still answer it with yeah, a big game. Yeah, that's a big Also, you're losing it, tempo because right now uh, Flame Strike might be the play, and if you just play the loot order, it's getting a ping and hey, it says he might be thinking Frostbolt. Like, I would definitely uh, like to see Mad Scientist being played here. He needs minions to start doing some damage. Just. But then again, if you use Flame Strike, you are not you have nothing to deal with your face hey, turn. Give me that. Hmm. Oh man, this is tough. Like, what Awkward about just turn. what about just frostbolt into frothing, pink into one, and start attacking with this little 
Yeah, well, drawing first, I still think, is the best move here. I mean, there's only so many cards you can continue to draw and hope that it can change the tide of the game, but his his next out here is to make him play for an Alex Straza play and hope his opponent doesn't have an answer to it. I'm really curious about this. I would definitely use minions to start attacking and uh, get some armor down. And he's making this super defensive play, but he's uh, just leaving Frolling there. Yeah, well, I guess that was really weird. Now he can pop the ice block. Can he? Right? Uh, well, most he's likely actually he can. one damage. Yeah, he's one off. But he, he can draw a weapon. Oh, he didn't draw it. Okay, never mind. Well, that's kind of hilarious. <laughs> Pitching can't generate one point of damage. You've been drawing three cards this turn. You still yeah. have the opportunity to go for some pretty big uh, pretty big armor plays as you drop armor spin number two or you just drop Ember Thorsten and armor up. The point is, Freeze Mage has a limited amount of damage in their deck, especially now that Antonize is dead. Yeah, what's and the card uh, card count? It's five remaining for Savits. I didn't see how many is remaining for Orange. I would guess the same. Around the same. Freeze Mage yeah. draws a lot in this deck. It weeds out through Mad Scientist, where it grabs from your deck and plays it. It's got Acolyte of Pain, Arcane Intellect, Loot Hoarders. I like going for face because if this game is going to get to fatigue, Orange is just going to die. Yeah. And no Alex Straza for him. Five cards. At least he still has Ice Block for one more turn. And no weapon to proc it for Alex Savitz. Alex Straza is the life binder. Brings life and hopes to everyone nice. except... Deathwing. It brings life and... <laughs> Deathwing, Malagos, and Necron. Yeah, basically Alex Straza helps to do that. Yeah. I mean, that is 19 points of burn. Well, I guess 22 if you count that Thanos might live. But That's it's still so fight. far away. Yeah. Now he's got a Frostbolt to face in order to survive. But then there's Armor Smith gaining life. You know, the, the Thanos surviving, though, is generally pretty powerful if you can get those spell combinations off. I really wonder if he plays any dragons here. Well, Who he has Savitz? to play. Orange. Orange. Oh, well, he has Alex Straza. He has to have Alex Straza. In fact, that's like Freeze Mages. One of the most core cards. Outside well, of the burn. Well, this sucks for Orange. Draws didn't pan out like at all. Even then, it's still pretty tough when your opponent draws as well as he did. Because this Alex Straza has to be used defensively. Yep. And when you put your opponent... When you put yourself... When you play Alex Straza on yourself... You can't win. You it generally don't win matchup, this matchup yeah. at all. Yep. True. Yeah, there's so much life. It's already the GG. Is that lethal this turn, though? Not yet. But no, it doesn't he, can, have he can take his time, for sure. I mean, Harrison does put a lethal uh, on the board. Grants free armor if there's a flame strike. So Orange is drawing dead. Seems like there's nothing in his I deck mean, to finish he, the game. Uh, there's, no, there's nothing really drawing dead anymore. There's just no more threats in his deck. Yeah, he, he's got I was one like more thinking about what can he draw. He's got one more Ice Lance. He he used all of his secrets, right? One more fireball, maybe. Uh, I lost track of the fireball, so you yeah, might be right. There was like 18 of them. So. And then that's it. He's like, that's all his cards left in his deck. Yeah. He doesn't have minions that can generate card damage. I mean, uh, damage oh. over time. His hope might be that Savitz doesn't have any cards remaining, but Savitz has the best combination right here. He's got Grim Patron and the Warsong Commander. Well, he doesn't have lethal with this. This is Emperor is just way better. Yeah. yeah. I mean, also keeps armoring up. It also, the fatigue war, like, it's very clear Freeze Mage will die first if he just keeps armoring up, and Freeze Mage also deck fatigues out. There's no way for Mage to really outpace here. Second fireball, fireball though. So there's still, Iceland's the last card. Possibly. Yeah, he, he has to use this on the, the Emperor Thorsten. He doesn't want to play Acolyte of Pain because it's going to accelerate him to fatigue. It's his last minion that can get repetitive damage in. So Orange is going to dance this one out, maybe on behalf of seeing all of Savitz's cards in case he matches him in the future. Maybe he's passing information to his Archon teammates. <laughs> like, if you play Savitz next right. round, here you go. That's deep. That's deep. I mean, that's, that's yeah, something But it makes I sense, do. of course. Yeah. With his dying breath, I will support Amaz. Take my energy! It's really <laughs> hard to concede, by the way, especially in this spot. It, it takes a lot of mental I strength. mean, it takes two clicks, but I know <laughs> what you mean. <laughs> Kind of. Hearthstone is confusing, man. I mean, what if you accidentally quit your 10th deck slot when you try to concede? Or you, you just change your um, card back into something you really dislike? Well, you're fatigued out, so it doesn't even matter then. At this yep. point, it doesn't, yeah. 
Oh, we just got a word too that uh, Amaz end up losing his first round. It's a pretty big deal. Who's he playing against? I don't know. We, we'll, we'll check in as the match report scores uh, or match score reports. Oh, that's in. cool. That's cool. But we'll let you know I guess, as soon as. They, in the meantime, we're about to finish out the final dance ceremony here. Savita has been courting Orange for a while, but he will take this first big win. I mean, sending not only just getting one zero, but sending Orange to zero one is also increasing his chance significantly to have. Uh, a good deep run here as the tournament progresses. That's as uh, this six. is going to be the final turns here. And Savis actually has a lot uh, of experience with the Swiss tournaments. Like Savis was the, the first winner of the big Swiss right. uh, Gamers Origin in France. Mm -hmm. 200 people, and he won that. So I have high hopes for Savis here. But that tournament had a really weird cut to top after like, like top 16. Top, 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 top 64, I think. Oh, top 64? Or top 32. In the first edition. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. That was a different one. You're thinking about the one where they had like at a big university. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. that was Gamer Surgeon too. So I've used yeah. better. Okay. All right. Pretty so here. quirky interaction that Blizzard also freezes the copied Grim Pageant that comes out. It's kind of a... Oh, interesting thing where you play removal spells on the patient directly and it ends up affecting it. Kind of like Imp Gang Boss. If you swipe Imp Gang Boss directly, you kill the 1-1, one -one, but if you swipe another minion that actually creates the 1-1 one -one and it lives. Yep. It's all about the stack. In uh, World of Warcraft Magic, you have the stack or like... I was calling Magic? Is it stack as well? Yeah, it is. Okay. All right, well, that's the first series, and it's over. A uh, congratulatory handshake comes out from Orange as Savitz takes a very much-needed uh, Series 1 victory here. And Savitz was telling me how he was feeling a little tired. He actually uh, didn't sleep very much in preparation for the event uh, right now, because I guess he was busy building deck lists. Players got the chance to submit deck lists at the very final moment. I believe it was noon today, and it's currently around 2 p.m. So they've had two hours to really figure out their decks for between everything, yeah. then and now. So do you guys think like Orange bringing the Freeze Mage is a mistake? Is this deck not that good at the moment uh, with everybody playing uh, Green Patron? I think like Freeze Mage is awful in the meta game. Like I mean, it depends. Right now, f if, if you f sense a lot of aggro, Freeze Mage is pretty good against it. Zoo, if you see a lot of the aggressive Paladins that I've been spawning on ladder, mm -hmm. like Freeze mm -hmm. Mage is excellent because of the way it interacts with, uh, or, or causes less interaction with no, Far let's, End. Let's go, here. let's go uh, here. Where you're able to survive a lot of aggro and push against it. You have so much heal, so you're generally okay. I mean, why not ask him in right now? Savita is here on the desk. Uh, as the first series winner, how you feeling? I'm feeling awesome. I mean, that's a big one to get that out of the way. Yeah. And you get Orange run one. Did you feel? Oh yeah. Did you feel like you're unlucky to face Orange instead of like a, a Swedish person, let's say, mm. that is new to Hearthstone and just came here to have fun? And well, it was a bit unfortunate in that sense, but I thought that my lineup was because we, we actually talked a, a little bit yesterday. We were hanging out, so I um I knew he was playing Freeze Mage, and uh, at the, in the end I I felt like I had a pretty good lineup once I got a win with my Zoo. Yeah, that, that's what we were talking about here. Uh, what do you think about the bringing Freeze Mage to this tournament? Is it like a weak spot in someone's lineup? It could be. I, I, I think that Freeze Mage is, is a better deck in um, other formats than, than, uh, than Conquest. Because mm -hmm. it's one of those decks that it, somebody might just bring a lineup that you can't get a single win with. Yeah. So it, it, I think it's, it's a bit of a gamble. I think that overall the deck is really strong. But um, he well, didn't work out this time for Orange. Why Midrash Hunter? Uh, other than like Face Hunter maybe or Hybrid? I was just going through the Liquid Heart power rankings. I just like copied the the most popular list there. It was like rank one, so I don't know. I haven't been playing Hunter for weeks. I, oh, I played a few games here and there, but not that many. Like just a few. So I, I just like I, I don't want to try to make my own um, own Hunter deck because I don't feel like I can I can make a better list than somebody who's rank one. So um, you said you just took the deck list from the the power rankings. How did you ov overall prepare for the Swiss tournament? Are, is your mindset different because you have to go for like? seven rounds of uh, of the tournament instead of just going through the double elimination or single elimination uh, well um, I, I just like I, I just picked the three strongest decks and just rolling with that I've been playing inner fire priest on my stream for the past three days it's like a, I to be honest like my you copying rain my <laughs> I did it first I did as it first. usual oh I you did, did it first. first I did first uh, but anyway as um, usual that's usual <laughs> 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 but um yeah I, I mean uh, I don't feel like the game has changed all that much and uh even though I didn't like specifically prepare for this one so much, like playing the patron or hunter, I think I'm I'm still in good shape. And uh, now that I beat Orange, I think I can beat anyone. Good. That's a really good m mindset to have in the Swiss tournament. There's six more rounds for you. Yep, it's gonna be really tough. Yeah, good I, luck. I do want to ask uh, on the final question here. You're often a player that usually 
depending on how you're feeling at the moment, can have a mindset that goes all the way, or you exit out early. That's kind of one of the, mm -hmm. the, the curses of Savitz, I guess you could say. Uh, mm -hmm. how, how are you feeling? Are you feeling like this is your kind of tournament, or is it feel you're still just kind of like, well, I'm not sure. Maybe I'll like go one two or one or two two. Uh, yeah, wh what's what's your what's your psychology state at the moment? When I woke up this morning, I actually slept really poorly last night. night and I was feeling really sick, but um, um, now that I, that I was playing, I, th I thought I would be just like getting crushed here, to be honest. But when I when I was playing, I actually felt like I was in the zone. So um, we, before the game, I would have given my chances like to be really bad. But now after that game, if I can keep that up, because I I, I don't know how it looked to you guys, but I I felt like. Uh, there might have been some tiny mistake, but overall, I think I played well, and um, yeah, if I keep if I keep playing content. like that, um, I think I, I might even like yeah. go far. Well, you know, it's the normal stuff when you cast. It's like, well, why did he do that? I'm not sure if I like it. Oh wait, this is actually really smart. It was yeah. like the <laughs> uh, that happened about five or six times mm -hmm. per game. So, well done there. Savitz is on fire, and he's taking out Orange, one of the hardest opponents in round number one. You can definitely get. And uh, that does mean that we're going to move on to Heat 2 after this quick commercial break. Don't go anywhere. DreamHack Summer 15 has just begun. We'll be back right after this.